Hey, how you lovely folks doing? I basically just spent the better part of, I don't know, three days botanizing in various parts of northern New Hampshire. Saw some cool stuff, had some disappointments. Of course, this is all coming on the uh, tail end of a major flub that I had, uh, you know, been a victim of, which was deleting about three or four videos worth of, uh, you know, video um, that I was going to show you. So I'm going to make it up for it by just shooting a ton of videos. I was supposed to go way, way, way up north to a uh, high elevation uh, Thuya and Fur Swamp, which I'm not sure if I'm going to end up putting that video out just because there really wasn't anything going off. In fact, uh, still plenty of snow up there, which I'll probably talk about in a, another video because I do have, do have some interesting stuff from up there. Anyway, right in front of us is a Cypripede macaw, an orchid. Um, in the Cypripedioidae subfamily of orchids, and uh, this is basically the uh, you know the big winner, so to speak, for folks this time of year. And uh, I've talked about this plant before. Um, I've kind of even talked down about this plant a little bit before, but uh, rest assured, this is a wonderful, wonderful native orchid. Kind of an oddity taxonomically. You get quite a few species of Cypripedium, you know, around the uh, the temperate regions of the world. This isn't the only one here. Um, there's actually quite a few around, and in a minute I'll zoom out to show you. But I, I'm going to do a um, an in-depth, you know, plant uh, plant spotlight on this video. I'll still give you the rundown right now, just what's going on here anatomically. So you got to remember with orchids, orchids are of course you know famous for having highly modified petals and novel methods of uh, pollination. This plant being no exception. The actual slipper here, this pouch, here's that modified petal. So it's open in the front. And what the pollinator is going to do, he's going to get up in there and he's going to fly up through the top here. He's going to buzz around, he's going to get stuck. He's going to fly up the top here and then up in here we have two anthers. Not uh, not pollinarium like most orchids, but true anthers, Cypripedioidae, it's a somewhat basal family. So they lack the true anthers. Uh, you get a bract subtending the inflorescence here, ovary right there, two few sepals on the bottom, one sepal up top. And these dangly things, these are the other two petals. Got to remember, these are monocots, so they are, are uh, you know, parts of three. And in fact, you've got these two anthers in here, which you've got right here. This other little thing that comes down, kind of protecting the uh, the backs of the anthers in the column there, which are the, the female parts down in there too, is you've got actually a staminode. So one petal, two petals, two few sepals, one free sepal. Actually, maybe it's the, I uh, can't remember if it's the top or the bottom uh, sepal that's used. It doesn't matter. Uh, your two anthers and then your one staminode, because remember, these are technically the stamens here. Hopefully my fat finger is not bothering it too much for you. And then, uh, excuse me, two an the two stamens, staminode. We already covered all that. You get the bract sort of subtending, protecting this ovary, this inferior ovary back here. And then down on the ground there, those are those two petals, or two uh, leaves that they often, well, they always have. You got one right there. Got a whole bunch down over here. Quite an interesting plant, although I'll, I'll be completely blunt with you. The uh, one that I think I've seen plenty of, just, you know, just, just me personally. No, no, not, not trying to begrudge the plant or anything, but it's one I've seen uh, plenty of times. Still very important, very, very rare. Uh, you know, you if you go west or north of here, um, tends to favor the more acidic stuff, which is unusual for an orchid. Most orchids prefer calcareous, you know, basic sediments. Uh, this one's a woodland orchid, doesn't exist in fens or bogs. Most of the orchids you get around here are growing in swamps, fens, bogs, etc. And they're growing where the soil's basic, you know, a lot of places to the north and to the west of here. Anyway, I got maybe two other things that I can show you here, kind of non sequitur. Just some cool plants I know are, are kind of going off right now. And we'll take a look. We'll see what's going on. So we'll take it easy. Oh, check it out. Tiny little forget-me-nots. Myosotis is the genus. No clue if these are the native one or uh, one of the several invasive ones. There's a, I don't want to go too far in here because it looks like this is a prime deer tick and poison ivy habitat. There's what those little guys look like close up though. 
for our Genesis family. Little forget-me-nots. Yeah, some nice folks just walked by. We were talking plants for a second. Took a look at this lovely geranium maculatum here. Native geranium. I don't got too much to say about this. Crane's bills, the uh, common name. It's got these nice palmate leaves on it. Kind of soft, kind of fuzzy. Nice mix. Get that in the view for you. Yeah, right there. And they're really distinct fruits on these things. So the uh, when it's pollinated, that uh, stig that style there will elongate and harden up, and it gets where it gets its common name, Crane's bill from. Pretty interesting, but uh, also you know not too unusual. Okay, we'll probably end up wrapping it up here, but we got a real, uh, real interesting plant in the family Orobincaceae, and much like orchids, I have a fixation on that family Orobincaceae because that is a family of almost entirely obligate parasites. This is uh, formerly Orobanchi uniflora, now currently I believe it goes by the name Aphalon uniflorum. One flowered brimrape is the family. And uh, as you can see, this plant's producing no leaves, no chlorophyll of its own, uh, much like, um, again, another plant that I'm obsessed with, Monotropa uniflora. However, unlike Monotropa uniflora, this is not a fungal parasite. This is a, um, a plant parasite. In fact, it's probably parasitizing uh, whatever this is right here. It could be an Erigeron or a Saldago. Parasitizes a lot of members of the, of the uh, family Asteraceae, a lot of the members of the sunflower family. There's some yarrow coming up next to me. Uh, you know, plenty of sunflowers around for it to work with. Um, look inside, you know, these are actually wrapping up from what I understand. But you can wrap, look inside there. As you can see, just a, uh, just a bunch of flowers coming up out of the ground with the hostorium down there tapped in, uh, completely stealing all of its nutrients from, uh, the plants around it. Unlike some other, you know, members of Orm Bacasey I've actually seen nearby here, like Melampyrum linear, which is a hemiparasite, does a little bit of photosynthesizing. And it does a little bit of uh, stealing. Pretty interesting, I think, on that note. We will wrap it up for the day.